Now, I thought I'd also draw attention to a piece that's been running in the mail, two-part investi investigation by Rob Draper into the 2010 World Cup, and more specifically, England's campaign. One of the most disappointing ones, really, Jamie Carragher, you were part of it, you remember it well. There's been a lot of talk about Fabio Capello, that Italian regime, it being too strict, it being too remote, um, no butter on the table at lunch, no ketchup on the table at lunch. And Fabio Capello, I don't know if you saw it, came up fairly recently and defended his planning for it. But, yeah, just thought it'd be nice to get your thoughts. For you, what happened that year in that campaign? Well, listen, it, it didn't go well. I came into the squad later. I wasn't as, as well rehearsed with Fabio Capello and his staff as maybe the other players were. But sometimes <laughs> I, I, I read things for a 12 years later after World Cup, so these things always come around. And... Even though I'm talking about some of my teammates here and friends, I'm sick of hearing footballers make excuses and always blaming a manager, always blaming the coach, where we live, ketchup on the on the table. I mean, that's, whether there's ketchup on the table has got nothing to do with anything. Uh, the base we were in, I thought, was I thought I loved it. The training pitch was right there. I mean, the facilities were fantastic. People were saying we couldn't go out and do things. But I think that the players are on safaris, they're going to play golf. You're at a World Cup. I don't know what people actually expect, uh, where they're going to be. Every three or four games, you're building up towards a game. So there's actually the warm down after one game. Then you're building up to the next one uh, with the training. Uh, you can't be going out anyway. You'll be flying about uh, round town if, you, if I was at home in Liverpool, if I had a game in a day or two anyway. So I always uh, think whenever you're a player, and I always take myself back to a player, I've never managed, I've never coached, is... Always look at yourself first. Always do that. Now, that doesn't mean you can have thoughts on a manager could have done something different or could have maybe played a different team or could have went about things better. I'm sure Fabio Capello could in some cases, but to actually blame where we were, blame Capello, blame what the food was, I just think it's a nonsense. And I think the, the players at that time, we didn't perform at World Cups. And it wasn't just that World Cup. It was almost every other turn we didn't perform. So why that then comes down to Capello's management, how he went about things. And let's not forget, this is a manager who's won European Cups and, and managed the best players in the world in Maldini, Van Basten, Hullet, Berezi. Uh, so I think it's a bit rich for us as players who haven't really achieved anything at international to start questioning you know, a manager of uh, Capello's calibre. Jamie, can I just ask you a question there? Because I, sorry, Pat, just ask Jamie a question because I remember working on that World Cup and and I think there was a, a certainly in the uh, when he was playing Steven Gerrard on the left wing, I think that was something that everyone wasn't comfortable with because you know what Stevie's like. I played on the left wing for England. We always seem to put you know square pegs in round holes with managers, and I think that was something that upset a lot of people as well. Yeah, but. That, that for me is not down to Capello in some ways in that when you bring Capello in or you bring Eriksson and everyone talks about 4-4-2 they had success playing 4-4-2 with their club managers so why why did you get them as a manager then and expect them to change when they come into the international setup? That's what I, I can't get. I mean Eriksson was criticised for playing Lampard and Gerrard together the two best midfield players but he put them together too similar I get that the difference with Capello was at least he had a, a hold midfield player defensive mind one in Gareth Barry I think Stevie had what you might almost call a not a free role but I think he actually defended from the left and was allowed to actually go and play between the lines and I think actually Rafa Benitez who was his club manager and uh, obviously Capello at that time always felt Stevie was at his best when he was maybe ahead of central midfield so Rafa at times played him on the right uh, played him in number 10 Capello had Rooney at number 10, so he then used uh, Stevie to the left. Now, don't get me wrong, Stephen Gerrard's not going to pick left midfield, and neither would we, but I don't think it was left wing as such. I think it was almost he could go and join in with Wayne Rooney and defend from the left. But as we always know, you played on the left, Stevie did, Scholes did. The reason people played is because we didn't have a proper left winger or a top left-sided player, so at times you have to adapt to that uh, really. But when you bring Capello in, you know what system he's going to play. He played uh, Boban there for AC Milan in those great uh, teams in the early 90s. He was, he was a right-footed attacker midfielder. Maybe it was something similar he had in mind with Steven Gerrard. Jamie, do you ever think it could have been different had the Lampard goal been allowed and that game against Germany had gone to 2-2? I know I'm probably uh, being a little fanciful there, but or did I'm just sort of getting at, did it feel wrong from the start? Uh, well, when you say it felt wrong, there was there was there was injuries. Of course, I think uh, 
I think there was a problem over the captaincy. I can't remember exactly what it was at that time, but I think Rio then got injured as well. I think that may have been the captaincy thing. Uh, I'll tell you what happened at half time uh, when the goal went in. I thought it was brilliant management uh, at the time. I did. It didn't pan out that way because of the result. But I remember at half time, everyone coming in complaining about the Lampard goal, how far over the line it was. I'm not sure what the score was. I think it may have been 2 1 uh, then. Yeah. So, but I always remember Capello coming in. And just shutting that uh, conversation down and being really strong on it. It doesn't matter what's happened. It's 2-1. Forget it. Because everyone was almost feeling sorry for themselves. It was over the line. All the coaches were coming and saying, oh, we, we've had it looked at a TV. And he just came in straight away and was just like, no, forget it. It wasn't given. Get on with it. And I actually always remember that. I was a sub in the game watching that. And I was at that time, I probably had uh, ambitions maybe to go into coaching. Mind. I really uh, admired Capello for not using that as an as an excuse right then and knowing that, you know, the second half was so huge. But, I mean, the game just completely went away from, from England in that uh, second half and it was a bad way to go out of a tournament, really, 4-1. I think Capello actually did OK at the start of the next qualifying campaign, but obviously then he, he left his job. I think it was over John Terry's captaincy or the FA telling him who, who should be captain. He did change the squad. It was an agent squad. Me, uh, part of that as well, uh, really. So he picked a, a younger squad going forward and then, unfortunately, never got a, uh, another crack at a tournament. 